Frankie, welcome back to the show, bub. Uh, thanks for having me again, Mike. Yeah, it's always good to have you on. And uh, you got a big fight coming up in Madison Square Garden. Um, you got to love fighting in that place. Yeah, man, it's, it's, you know, it's not too far from me. I get to drive in, drive out. And, uh, you know, obviously, tr you know, train, train that Henzo is literally across the street for many, many years. So definitely feel like home. Nice. And then, uh, so, so what is it, uh, how did this fight happen? I mean, with, uh, with Cheeto, like, how did this get put together? I mean, I don't know. You know, my manager called me and said, uh, Available. we're trying, you know, I told him I wanted to get a fight. I wanted to get a fight 40 years out, you know, and, uh. I think they're you know, throwing some names around, and, and he came up, and you know I I, I always say yes, so yeah. that's how it works out most times. I mean, he's he's had like twenty five fights, no finishes as far as been finished. Um, what, what's the big uh, like goal, I guess, in this fight to kind of prove? I mean, you, you were a champion, you've done everything, so it's like you're fighting a guy less ranked than you, but he's dangerous. He's up and coming. He's had some big wins. Um, never been finished. I'm pretty sure. Um, what is the motivation to to beat him and what to do next, uh, considering you are. Congratulations, by the way, on your belated birthday. You are 40 now. Hit yeah, the big, the big 4 0. I'll give you a little bit of input on that. It's, it's been my best my best year since I turned 40. So, uh, yeah, it's not a bad thing. I think it's it's a good time in, in the world yeah. to be 40 years old for, for a man. You know, it's uh, it seems like uh, it seems like you can still do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what 40 is supposed to feel like or anything. Yeah. And I feel good. I still get after in the gym. My workload is pretty much the same. So, uh, you know, I mean, you know, every fight you got to go out there and you got to prove yourself. Um, you know, I'm coming off a loss, so I want to go out there and get a win, finish the year off with a win and uh, on a high note. Yeah, you're training hard, man. I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, all your photos on Instagram and stuff. And so you're training with Cody. So your podcast, with Cody. Um, so, uh, again, are you looking to continue on quite a while or is it just to get a couple more fights and, and, and kind of finish strong and – and 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 show that you can still do what you you could do before, uh, or what is the? Yeah, you know, I'm never I'll never put an end date on anything, man. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I ever even retire. You know what I mean? I'm not. I don't know if I'm gonna be one of those <laughs> yeah. guys. So, yeah. uh, you know, or maybe like officially at least. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, I'm I'm just going out there having fun. I'm still enjoying doing what I do. Uh, if if my body allows it, man, I'll I'll, I'll do this for a long time, man. Yeah. Uh, I really don't have any other plans to be honest with you. And uh, I, I I do enjoy I do enjoy going to the gym. I enjoy pushing myself. I like, uh, you know, I, I don't enjoy dieting, but, you know, I like yeah. the way it makes me look and, and feel. You know, I, I, during fight camp, you feel like a million dollars. You know, you're, you're training at such a high level. You're putting only good things in your body. You know, I'm not boozing or anything like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's definitely good for my health. Yeah, and, and, and the training, is it is it the same? Or, I mean, have you had to kind of change a little bit with your age? Um, not just from like your age and your body being old or anything like that, because I'm not saying that's, that's the case. And there's a lot of people fighting. I fought at 37, and the fight didn't go my way, but I felt fantastic. You know what I mean? Like there was no age issue at all. Like it was probably one of my best cardio comf comfort fights I've ever had, where I just felt so comfortable out there. Um, but as far as like just your body and 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 learning and experience and you know when you had a full career, we've changed the curriculum at AK multiple times because we we used to train way too fucking hard, beating the shit out of each other every day and. <laughs> And we couldn't keep that up, you know, and, and continue to have a, a healthy career. So is there any big changes you've made in the last few years or, or last couple of years that, that's been different in your camp to uh, just kind of like adjust know, to, to, to the. I, I think I cut out the fat, you know what I mean? I definitely you know, cut the things that I don't think were helping me. Uh, you know, obviously throughout my career, I, I keep going down in weight. So, um, you know, I, obviously changing the diet and this, that, and stuff like that. But if anything, I think that's helped me out. You know, back when I was 55, I. I was eating pizza at all camp, but even at 45, I could I could cheat eat pizza, have a beer here and there. Like this time, I have to really be on top of my diet, and and honestly, I just feel excellent in training because I'm only putting good stuff in my body. Yeah, that makes a big difference, man. A lot of things people are always asking me like how I'm in in good shape in, in Thailand and what am I doing over here, and they always you know there's always those few they're like oh steroids, those thyroid steroids are good, yeah, right. but it's like. <laughs> Bro, I have no acne. I have my, the same hairline I had when I was 23. I've never failed a drug test in my life. It's like it's it's not that. It's just I, between kind of having the esophageal spasm problem that I had during my career where I couldn't eat. Um, right. I don't eat a lot and I eat clean. You know, that's it. I just don't eat a yeah. bunch. I, I don't eat fast food. I don't go to McDonald's. I don't do all that kind of shit. I've just kind of done it or not done it for so long. It's just kind of not not as big of a you know craving for me. So I just eat clean and 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 stay healthy and stay active. So. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I can totally understand that the diet's so so important in that situation. Um, 
Madison Square Garden, was that the reason you came back to fight this fight? Um, was that the number one motivating factor and then you just found an opponent? Or what did Cheeto work out and then you just looked for a location? I have to assume Madison Square Garden was a big – you didn't want to pass that fight up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I got to fight here once um, five years ago, the first time that the UFC was at, was, was at yep. Ed Garden. And, uh, you know, I wanted to definitely, I, I definitely always like fighting before the holidays so that I could kind of, you know, enjoy the holidays, not to be so worried about, you know, a fight and, you know, enjoy the family and stuff. So I knew I wanted to get one in. Uh, I, I found that they were coming to, to New York in November with, with fans as well. Yeah. I have fought with fans in, in a couple of years. So, uh, you know, a lot of my, you know, hometown people could go and I jumped on an opportunity as soon as I could. And I told, told my manager, Ali, I said, Hey, we got to get on that card. I don't care who it is. And, and here we are. Yeah, and then bantamweight's good for you. You feel good there. I know you talked about dieting and having to like cut down a little bit, but you you look good. I mean, you look you look yeah. strong and, and healthy and everything. So I mean, that, that's what's yeah, important. Yeah, no, I feel good. You know, I do it right. I, I'm I'm a very disciplined guy. So uh, you know, I start eight weeks out. I, I make sure I'm, I'm you know I'm on point with my diet. I, I get to the point towards the end of camp where I can almost eat a little bit more than I, than I have been all nice. camp just because my tablet gets so good and, and you know I'm I'm so on track. You did so well at 155, but you were just you were so small for that division, and it just it didn't bother you at all. So it was, compared to being just comfortable and being able to eat and not having to cut a lot of weight, compared to now, what, what would you say the biggest difference is as far as like good and bad? Uh, you know, I, I guess the bad thing is, is you know, you just you, the, the, the discipline. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, it, there's no cheat days. If, you know, I can't be like <laughs> I can't come home from a hard day workout. But you know what? I'm gonna eat a bunch of pasta or and stuff yeah. like that. So that that's the only unfortunate thing. But in, in you know in in uh, in retrospect, I guess is I, I'm always feeling good because I'm not putting any of that crap in my body, and um, I don't feel like I'm 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 not like cutting like I'm not you know I'm I'm about ten days out now nine days out now and I'm still eating pretty good. It's not yeah. like I'm cut, not eating much, so I'm just eating very healthy. So it's yeah. only good stuff and it's going in. All right, fellas, you want to help support the podcast? I know you do. All this content, all these interviews with these fantastic guests that we're putting out for you, well, now you can. And you can save 20% off and get free shipping by getting the best below-the-waist men's grooming products on the market. I'm talking about Manscaped. All you got to do is go to manscaped.com, M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com, enter code QUICK at checkout, 20% off, and free shipping. QUICK is my nickname. It is not how you use the product. Uh, Don't be silly, fellas. Come on. Uh, but Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, and now they have the new Lawnmower 4.0, which is next level, the best trimmer on the market ever made. What makes it different? It has skin safe replacement ceramic blades, controllable LED lights, wireless charging dock, and a 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology, and it's even waterproof. They also have a full line of hygiene and grooming products like the Shears 2.0 Luxury Nail Kit. Crop Mops, Preserver, Reviver, and a lot more. Manscaped has everything you need to appeal to your lady friend, but don't thank me. Thank yourself by going to manscaped.com, entering code QUICK, get 20% off, get free shipping. It's a win-win for you. It's a win-win for us, and you're supporting the podcast. What is your camp like, basically? Guys of your level and of your experience and of your success, I always like to ask this, and I probably asked you before, but it's good for the listeners to kind of find out what you do and, and with all the success you've achieved and have and, and, and are still having. Um, what is a typical camp like for you? Like how many days you grapple and spar and do cardio and strength and conditioning and stuff like that? Like what's a typical just fight camp for you right now? Yeah, you know, uh, we, we spar twice a week. Used to be three, and that's yeah. something I've learned, you know, to, to kind of <laughs> cut down on. Us too. Uh, spar twice a week. Um, I wrestle twice a week. I do jiu-jitsu twice, twice a week. I do strength and conditioning three times a week. And uh, and pad work probably another two or three times a week as well. So we fit it all in. Um, uh, you know, I feel like spoke to a specialist camp at Ricardo's, the, the, the jiu-jitsu, uh, he's been running almost like a wrestling practice, which is – you know, a little bit more intense, a little, you know, a lot, a lot of live goes from our feet, which is just perfect for, for, you know, for MMA. Yeah. Do you notice that like, so for what I've noticed in my career, especially for my last fight, which I said I felt amazing for, even though I was 37, um, I found that like less is more kind of toward the end of my career where we, we used to kind of like think like I had that guilt feeling like every athlete probably has. If you miss like, 
if, if you if you don't work out six hours a day or or you take a day off or a morning off or or you just have a bad session you think the whole world's coming to an end and you're going to lose your fight um we lived through that for many many years and then we realized that we were grinding our bodies into the ground and and we couldn't do anything and then we couldn't we couldn't really perform for any of our training sessions at an optimal you know level because we were beating ourselves up so much three times a, a week sparring hard three times a week hard air nine you know hard grappling tuesdays and thursdays wrestling tuesdays and thursdays we didn't have any real like breaks during the week and then saturday we trained like for half a day and then sunday was it that was it to, to rest have you noticed that like less is more kind of like what you're saying right now it seems like it's not a, a like six hour day workout but you get in there and you you, you get your shit done and, and and push yourself get a hard intense fast workout and then you let your body recover and, and rest and, and and that's what's important is that is that what you've noticed too or yeah, no, absolutely, man. You know, actually, I just, this couple week or this past week, I took I took a morning off, and you know, I always dread taking a morning off. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, yeah. I'm like like you said, you know, you don't like doing that, but <laughs> you know, that I came back that that afternoon and the next morning, and I felt amazing, and I'm like, man, that that I needed that, you know. So it's good to have the, uh, you know, just the confidence that that you know, and the, and the experience to know that that morning off's not going to kill you. If anything, it's going to do you good. And what is your fight week like? So obviously you're about to come into fight week. Um, what do you do typically for your your fight week as far as like uh, training? Like how many days do you train up until the fight, and then how many days do you rest? And then what are some of your kind of like traditions during fight week to kind of get your mind off the fight? Maybe some foods, maybe TV, just some stuff to kind of like prep you for this. I'm just trying to give people an idea of what it's going to be like for you for the next nine days until they see you perform at Madison yeah. Square Garden. Yeah, well, you know, I, you know, I'll, fi I'll finish this week of training like a normal, somewhat normal. I mean, my nice sparring's done. Uh, we do like we call it up downs. It's like right. uh, on Saturday, which is like a hard go, but you know, very controlled yeah. pad work with a controlled, you know, grappling partner. Kind of like circuit training a little bit. Uh, Sunday, obviously, will be my, my my last rest day, or or, or not my last, day, but the rest day before the fight week. And that fight week, I, I you know, I'm a little not not the most typical guy. I, I like to train twice a day. Uh, yeah. I'll do a light one in the morning, and then I like to train around fight time, just get my body acclimated to, you know, being, you know, so I'll probably fight maybe around 10 o'clock, you know, on the East Coast here. So, uh, you know, I'll get in there 9, 9.30, make sure I get my body used to, you know, getting going around that time. Uh, and again, we'll do a lot of like, you know, circuit type training where pad work, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of this, kind of split the rounds, get a touch a little bit of every facet of the game. And, uh, you know, I, I, let, I let Mark Henry pretty much you know, dictate what we do. Um, and then Thursday is pretty much just a weight cut day. Uh, but I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a guy that, uh, that likes to sauna. I mean, I, I may jump in a sauna more for recovery if anything, but, um, I, I like to sweat the work. I like to work it off. I, I'm not a guy that, that does bass and stuff like that. I yeah. like to work it off. Yeah. And I think it's good to ask this because it's like, people always ask, sometimes they ask me not as much anymore because I don't fight, but uh, I, I see the question being asked a lot about fight week and stuff like that, but it's like, there's no right answer. I mean, I've seen guys like you train really hard and, and guys train super hard, you know, like I remember Dennis S Siver one time we fought in Germany or something and he was just, I couldn't believe how hard he was training the first three days of fight week. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, I have nothing left. And he did, you know, it's, it's different for everyone. And so there's no right answer. It's just your body. Some yeah. people like you that have a high wrestling pedigree, like you're used to training hard your whole life. So it's like for you, that's kind of what normally gets you in the path. For me, I was like, right. I'm super lazy on fight week. Like I, I do the bare minimum to rest my body. And I, I've kind of gotten over the whole feeling of like losing anything by not training as hard. So it's different for everyone. It's kind of a mindset thing. So it's, it's good to ask that question. Um, and then uh, after this fight, do you have any any immediate plans as far as like, a, like how you plan to win the fight? Obviously, we want to break that down. I'm going to get a prediction on how you see this fight going and then and then where does it take you like wh where are you looking to go from this fight uh with the big win especially a finish considering he hasn't been finished yeah you know well, well chito's kind of like a wild card man he yeah. comes he brings it uh you know heavy kicks he'll throw elbows in there he'll mix it up on the ground he's got some good jiu-jitsu so you know i I've, I've you know definitely mixed it up with a lot of different training partners to get ready for this guy and uh you know i just gotta be myself i can go out there push the pace like i always do I know my conditioning uh, can, can always last the last, you know, time. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Okay. I, I like to try to make guys wilt in there. And if yeah. we can do that at Cheeto and look for the finish, that would be that would be amazing. You know, do it in, in the garden, you know, right, right across straight, right across the, the state line from, from hometown. And, yeah. uh, you know, after that, not, no plans. Um, you know, I, I'm definitely going to come back and enjoy, enjoy the holidays with my family. Yep. And, you know, look, to, I, I, I'll never stay out of the gym too long. I just can't do that. You know, I... We got a lot of guys in the gym getting ready for fights too. Try to help those guys out, 
but uh you know I, i'd definitely like to get back in there by summertime yeah and uh yeah i mean a win over him would be fantastic and uh do a lot for you um it's going to be a tough fight. I'm excited for it, you know, because it's like he, he's coming up. He's got a lot of hype. He's got a lot of potential, but he's never fought anyone like you. And then that pressure, too. So it's like it's going to be an interesting fight to, to see him try to to try to find a way to beat you and, and, and to dominate you or to finish you or to just get a win in any way possible, because I see it being a very hard fight for him, like super hard. And uh, it's a big test for him. What do you think about these guys that are younger up and comers? It happens all the time where they call out the older guys, you know, the legends of the sport to try to get that big win, hoping that they're, you know, the, 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 the newer lines smelling the, the older lines kind of sensing a little bit of weakness or hoping there's weakness. Um, what do you think about that? As far as the guys calling you out now compared to when you first got in and you were looking to fight those guys, how do you feel you're different and, and, and that you're not going to let these guys beat you if you do fight them or if they do get to you or whatever? Yeah, man, it's just the nature of the game, you know, uh, in order to, to move up into the rankings and, and, and get your name uh, along the guys that are that, that have been there for a while is, is just to fight them and call them out. So I don't take anything personal, man. Uh, this is uh, this is, you know, this is the job, I guess you could say. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it, I mean, hey, you, you want to call me out, you know, sometimes you, you got to you know be careful what you wish for. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I may be a little long in the tooth, but um I'm still I'm still getting after it every day in the gym, and I, I'm I'm comfortable in, in what, what what I could do. You know, I'm comfortable in my skills, and not only you know I I have all that experience now. So, you know, the wisdom the wisdom definitely gives you some uh, s- some swag as well. And long in the tooth, that's great. Um, and let me just real quick, I got to ask you about your podcasting. You're up to almost 100 episodes now. Uh, the Champ of the Champ, and you got Roger Matthews on there and, and stuff. How's that going? And how do you like doing it? Do you like do you enjoy doing the podcast? Or I, mean, I assume you do. I do. I really do enjoy, it, man. Um, you know, Roger's a good for buddy of mine. Uh, I, I do it right in my basement. Um, nice. You know, we've been pretty consistent, like you said. We're on. We're about to come up on our 100th episode. In like a and, year. Uh, it, it's fun, you know. If anything. I get to – it's kind of like a bro, bro time with, with my boy talking about some stuff. We get some guests in at, at, from time to time. Uh, I get to, you know, work on speaking, uh, you know, in front of a microphone, in front of a camera. It's yeah. only good for, for you know, future endeavors that I, that I may come across. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. Mike Swick, he's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here – AKA Thailand is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. telling you guys i know everybody wants to go to thailand because thailand's so cool but you can't come to thailand without coming to aka thailand come on What's your end game after fighting? I mean, when guys get to your age, kind of like the mid thirties to forties, I know you're definitely thinking about what you're going to do after fighting, even though you said you want to keep fighting and don't think about stopping right now. Um, but what is your ideal end game? Like, obviously you got podcasting, you got your, your supplements, you got other things going on. I'm sure. Um, what is it ideally you'd like to do? And like, if we see in five years, 10 years from now, what, what would it be that we, in a post career that would make you happy and comfortable and, and kind of passionate uh, as far as a, a, another job, another another endeavor, another career. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm going to stay involved in this game some way, shape, or form. You know, right. whether whether I open my own gym, uh, whether I help manage guys, you know, maybe help Ali and then that uh, 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 department as well. But uh, you know, I, I felt like I've I've put so much into this, how I, I can't walk away from this sport. You know, and uh, it's still my passion. And um, you know. I, I, I already I feel like I help the younger guys on my team, so I feel like I have a good niche with that, and uh, I, I think I could be useful for for some guys that are that are trying to you know further their careers. All right, just a couple quick breakdowns or predictions. Uh, I don't want to keep you long. I know it's a quick update. You've been on the show many times, so I don't want you to seem yeah. like it's going to be like an hour episode <laughs> every time you come on. It's a super oh, quick good. update. But we got some huge fights coming up, and you got so much experience and and in, in, in the game. I have to get your predictions. So obviously, uh, Usman versus Covington. Um, 
crazy fight because man you know as, as dominant as Usman is I know he's he's a part of your management and everything and 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 he's uh I mean, he's got to be looked upon as one of the greatest welterweights of all time, pound for pound ranking. I think he's number one right now. Um, but Kobe's a fucking beast too, man, with that pressure. And he fought with a broken jaw last time, and it was kind of close, you know, to a to a to a degree. Do you think Kobe has enough to possibly beat him, or it's just kind of an uphill battle he's never going to get to, n- never get to the mountaintop? Yeah, you know, um, I think Kobe's a phenomenal fighter. His pace is second to maybe just Usman, you know? Yeah. And, uh, pretty... uh, you know, and you look at that last fight, it was very close and Usman was able to, to get it done. But I just think since that fight, Usman has even gotten better. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and he's not, now he's with Trevor Whitman, a different team. seems like he's putting his striking together even a little bit more. Uh, so, you know, they didn't even touch the wrestling. So I'm, I'm wondering if this fight is going to touch some wrestling this time around, or they're just going to bang it out again. But I, I really, you know, I'd have to go to Usman. We, you know, even the fact that we're we're buddies and yeah, he's part of my magic team, I just just think what he's been doing has been so so impressive. I'll just be honest. Like the thing is with Usman, he's one of those fighters, and it's happened many times that I just fell to believe in for so long. Like I, th- I thought he was a good guy and a great fighter. I just for some reason every time I saw him fight, I'd see some kind of holes, and and even though the opponent couldn't get get through those holes, I figured the next opponent would, and then he would just fix them every single time. So even the Kobe yeah. fight, I saw holes in that fight where he could have possibly lost it, or maybe he he didn't do as good as he could have in certain areas, but he fixes it every single time. So it's like hard to go against him now. It's like he he just gets better and better. And Kobe, I don't really have that same sense of he's just entertaining. He's got a lot of pressure, and he he says cool stuff. But I don't see, you know, the, you know, I don't see the same thing. So it's like, yeah, I, I guess I'm becoming a bigger Usman fan every single fight, and and I see now why he is one of the most dominant welterweights of all time because he just fixes every problem, even though you do see something maybe in a fight, it ain't there right. the next fight, you know? Yeah, he, he's definitely a, a, it's a true martial artist in that guy, you know. Um, started as a wrestler, and now he's, you know, he's got one of the best stand up in the game. I can be people out, away yeah. left and right, and. Uh, you know, he hasn't even used his wrestling in his last couple of fights, so um, he puts that in, in, into the game. Who knows what could happen? And then Gaethje versus Chandler. That's a fantastic match. Of, uh, I mean, they both can hit hard, but obviously Gaethje's just a freaking rock 'em sock 'em robots guy, and Chandler, you know, has the wrestling as well. So, so what do you think how that fight's going to go? And uh, do you think he, uh, Chandler can get past uh, uh, Gaethje after getting such a great start in the UFC? Yeah, you know, I, I've trained with both. I had both those guys out training in, in the past, and uh, you know, both stand-up guys, both you know, good dudes, always, always pushing the pace too. These guys go hard, they fight hard. Chandler's got knockout power. I think a lot of people just keep looking at Gaethje, but Chandler's definitely has some knockout power, some big wrestling, big strong guy. But Gaethje's just that like that wild card man. He's gonna bring it. Um, yeah, that's almost like a pick for me, dude. It, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, you've seen Gaethje with uh, with Habib in, in the wrestling, and uh, you know, obviously Chandler's no no Habib with wrestling, but he has that wrestling pedigree, and I don't know if he decides to use it or if he's going to be, you know, maybe a little bullheaded and say I'm going to try to stand with Gaethje. So yeah, yeah, that, that to me that that's a flip of a coin that one. I think it's and I think uh, Khabib kind of had the game plan or the the blueprint on how to beat Gaethje. Um, Gaethje is the kind of guy who's going to just stand with anyone. But if you saw the fight as it progressed with Khabib, Khabib started winning the stand-up as well. Um, and the only reason yeah. he started doing that was because he was mixing the wrestling and he was getting him so concerned with the wrestling and beating him up on the ground so much that, like, you know, Gaethje had to change his stand-up and it became more of an intimidating kind of, like, get-away-from-me uh, stance versus, like, just a kill-you and, and be-killed stance. So I think if Chandler takes that same approach, it could be a pretty interesting fight. Um, if he does do what you say and go out there, or, or could do... And just start rock and sock and robots could be really bad. If he just comes yeah, out there and wrestles, yeah. could be really bad. Like you just so it's an interesting fight for sure. It is. It is De- definitely definitely a, a wild card that one. So you're picking uh, Gaethje or Chandler? I didn't catch the, your final prediction. Uh, I, I kind of said I said it's a toss up. But if you, I'll, I'll pick. I'll, I'm, I'll go with Gaethje, man. It's just uh, the human hi- the highlight reel they call yeah. himself, dude. I think he, he might get it done with some big crazy knockout. 
Well, cool, Frankie. Listen, man, good luck in your fight coming up next week. Um, I'm, I'm definitely interested in watching. I always had Cheeto on the, on the podcast a couple of times, had you on the podcast a couple of times. I never try to bring the same two guys that are fighting. So I wanted to talk to you and, and bring you on and, and get your perspective. And I think you're going to do really good. It. And I love Cheeto. Uh, he's, I'm a big fan of his too. But I just think uh, I think you're going to do really good in this fight. And I think it's going to be great this Madison Square Garden. And you're representing us 40-plus-year-olds right now. So That's it's like right. there's a lot, right. of, a lot of old guys. One for the old guys. A lot of cool, cool factor to this one. So thanks again for taking time out, especially now so close to your fight and being on the show, giving us an update, and uh, I look forward to talking to you hopefully after your fight uh, or soon after and uh, catching back up again. Absolutely, Mike. Always a pleasure, my man. All right, brother. Take care. Take care, bro.